So what I'm about to read and say to many Christians will be an abomination. And the reason why that is, is because simply you are lacking in your knowledge of what Christ actually is, was. Um, I'm going to be reading from this book, The Second Coming of Christ, Paramahansa Yogananda, who was an exceedingly well-revered Indian guru who studied the Bible for most, if not all, of his adult life. It is all about what is said about Jesus, and then there is his spiritual and philosophical interpretation of what those sayings meant. Now, I was reading this, and I thought to myself, I just want to clarify what people on the internet consider Christ consciousness to be. Because, of course, this guy, Jesus, wasn't called Jesus Christ. He wasn't even called Jesus. He was called Jeshua Benderis, apparently. Um, but they referred to him as Yeshua, which probably got interpreted as Jesus, the Christ, the Anointed One, the One who had the blessing of Cosmic Consciousness. Christ Consciousness and Cosmic Consciousness are the same thing, people. So all of you Christians who are praying for this little goatee dude called Jesus, you have been barking up the wrong tree for all of your lives. Whether this guy called Jesus or anybody that resembles that ever lived is inconsequential. Because the, the point is, the whole point of this Christos is that it is within us. It's the very essence of the cosmos. And we can call the cosmos God, we can call the Christos the essence of God. We all are shards of God, we all are shards of the cosmos, and we have the same genetic makeup. And if we step outside of our ego, if we push that aside, if we evolve over and above the ego, we then enter into union with God, which is our Christ consciousness, which is our cosmic consciousness. This is what I've known intuitively for many years, and this is what I write about in my book. And I am absolutely decrying the vast majority of the nonsense uh, which comes out of Christianity uh, and the Bible because they haven't the foggiest clue what is actually happening. They are considering that Jesus is a man, it's true, it's true, it's true, and they're worshipping this Jesus and he's out there. They're completely missing the point. Jesus is a metaphor. The Christ is consciousness within you, your Christos, and it's you that you should be worshipping. It's the Spirit of God or Christ, you should be worshipping within you, not anything out there. You do not need to pray to anything. You do not need to worship to anything outside of your own existence because you, we, are God. Wow, it gets tiring, it gets tiring, it gets tiring. I don't know why I labour so. It's my job. Now, Jesus is always saying, the Father sent me, the Father sent me, the Father sent me. And I'm not doing my works, I'm doing the works that the Father sent me to do. Now, how many times have you heard me say that? I'm not doing this because I want to do it. Because frankly, I don't give a shit. I really don't give a shit deep down. Because, you know... It's beyond what I think from my egoic perspective as a human being. Why me? I'm like, why me? But it's a cosmic consciousness thing. And just like Jesus, who was telling people that he came down and he's doing what the Father wanted him to do, well, that is exactly what I'm doing. And there's been many, many people uh, on this world who have had the similar level of instruction 
that they don't know why they're doing it. They're compelled to do it through cosmic spirit, through the crystals. And some of you may be, Oh, you think you're so like Jesus, you think you're Jesus. You've got no idea what you're speaking about. You are absolutely very, very silly billies. You've got so much to learn. You need to learn a great deal more. And what these gurus always say, all the gurus all over the world in any single of these religions, they will tell you that the only way you are going to get into a relationship with the Christ, with the Christos, with the cosmic consciousness, is via your meditation. By shutting the fuck up and going into deep meditation on a very regular basis, you will then discover the Christos within you. You will then discover Christ within you. You will then discover cosmic consciousness and God consciousness. So that's what I write in my book. And that's what this guy is saying. And many other people are saying. And I've read uh, Kabbalah, and I, I, I've you know, studied Buddhism, and uh, all these different sort of slants of mysticism and spiritualism. They'll tell you the exact same thing. Islam and Christianity will lead you away from it. They are the devil incarnate. Whoever wrote those books are manipulators. They are filled with machinations to lead you out of your own Christos and take power over you. Let me read a few bits what this says. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. That's John 6, 34, 35. The Christ intelligence and the enlightened I am, the divine ego or spiritualized human consciousness, in me are one. Thus the Christ consciousness in me, being the same as the infinite Christ, is the source of life and consciousness of all living beings. Because I am ever consciously attuned to the Christ consciousness manifest in my life, my devotee who comes to me with a receptive attitude and who disciplines his life according to my teachings so that he permanently connects his human consciousness with the Christ consciousness which is present within me and within his own soul shall find all the hunger and all the cravings of his earthly and spiritual desires fulfilled forever. The devotee who occasionally is in tune with the Christ consciousness and who believes or is convinced of being able to unite with that consciousness and the ever new bliss in it will find that, unlike the ordinary man, he will no longer thirst for the temporary joys of material effects. Now, if you're not clear what that says, Christians, I implore you to read it again, to listen to it again. Buy the book. This is on page 834. This is the second edition. The second part of uh, the, the Second Coming of Christ. Volume 2. This guy is reading from what Christ is supposed to have said and explaining it graphically in detail. We are the Christ. The Christ, the Christos, God Consciousness, Cosmic Consciousness are all the same thing and they are within us. We are them. It is to be noted that two phrases, cometh to me and believe on me, have different significance. He that cometh signifies a soul who becomes one with Christ consciousness. And he that believeth signifies one who has only occasionally contact with Christ consciousness in meditation. You see? Now, when we start out our meditation, 
we touch on Christ consciousness sporadically here and there. When we practice our meditation over many years, we become the Christos. We are self-realized Christos. And then when we look at the world, we see God in everything. We see the Christos in everything. We are also supposed to be able to see the Christos and God in all human beings. I haven't managed to do that. I have only managed to see God in all natural things outside of the human being. Because the human being breathes, emits too much hate, evil and destructive energy. I cannot find it to see the Christos in these hollow husks. And also I do not believe that we are all the same. I do not believe that we all have the Christos within us. I do not believe that we are all from one paradigm. I believe that the entities which are in a human form here are many, many, many varying spirits coming from all different sorts of constellations throughout the cosmos. And many will never be reached because they are empty. They don't have what we fully fledged human beings have which is the heart and soul, uh, which is the portal to Christos. How many people do we know that we are positive that they could never be reached? Well, that's where I am on this. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me, this is Jesus again speaking, and believe not, and that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Now, everyone that seeth the Son and believeth on him, everyone that sees the Christ, everyone that feels the Christ and knows it to be true, then they will never die, they will never taste death, and they will be rose up at the last day. They won't burn like empty husks. But I say unto you that you who have only seen my physical form and have not felt the Christ consciousness within it have not believed as to what I am. Whosoever my Father gives to me, that is what shall come to me. And whosoever comes to me, sent by the Father, and who tunes in his devotion and attention with my consciousness. I will never forsake, no matter how sinful or error-stricken he is. He is my brother, even though unknowingly hiding the image of God's consciousness beneath his temporary delusional stricken mind. So he says here, whoever believes in me will be one with me and I will never depart from you, no matter how heinous you are. And that's one of the bones of contentions uh, lots of people have with this saying, which I do believe derived out of Romans. <clears throat> I have come from the heavenly realms of my Father to do the will of him who sent me. Most people come on earth being compelled by the seeds of actions of their past lives. So even he is saying here that uh, people are spirited from other dimensions. We're coming to earth for earth experience. Seeded by our past actions. But in this incarnation, as Jesus, I come not only to demonstrate my own final liberation and immortality in spirit, but to do the one will of my Father in helping others to liberate themselves by showing them 
in my own life the art of contracting Christ consciousness and cosmic consciousness. So Jesus is saying that he is contacting Christ consciousness. He's not saying it's me, 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 the human being, the, the, the effigy of God. He's saying Christ consciousness. I'm, I've come to this earth to show you the way to contact Christ consciousness, which potentially is within you all. And it's cosmic consciousness. Christ consciousness, cosmic consciousness. As the Christ intelligence in all creation is in tune with the will of God, the Father existing beyond creation, so is my will tuned with his will. The will of God the Father vibrates within my human consciousness and imitates to me that all the power of Christ consciousness that was reflected in me during my earth life must be consciously used by me without my losing any iota of it during the physical crucifixion of my body and retained after death, when I will lift my Christ consciousness and unite it with God the Father's consciousness. The consciousness, God the Father's consciousness, which is all pervasive all around in the ether, but it's also within us potentially. We can find that portal. On the last day, after attaining the final victory over all the karma I have taken on myself in relieving the sins of others, my human consciousness and my resurrected body, having overcome the delusion of crucifixion and being in tune with the ultimate cosmic consciousness of God the Father, will also find immortality. I will perceive my body not as a part of temporary change, but as an emanation of the changeless immortality. And then my body will also dissolve in the cosmic consciousness, retaining its individuality, materialising everywhere, any time at my will, or in response to a real soul call from a true devotee. And this also is the will of God the Father, who is the creator of my body and the Christ consciousness in it. That every advanced devotee who, in the light of his meditation, developed intuition, becomes one with the only reflected begotten Son, the Christ intelligence in creation, and is able to retain that consciousness of unity, believing in the Christ consciousness attained in meditation. Every single guru I've ever listened to or read about, they even Jewish um, Orthodox um, believers and Kabbalists, they will tell you that the portal into union with God is via meditation. And if you Christians do not meditate, you do not know God. You will not know God and you will not enter Christ consciousness. That's what they are all absolutely emphatic about. Because we have to get outside of our ego. Jesus, 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 look me, Jesus, Jesus. I'm so insecure. You have to get outside of that. You have to get into cosmic consciousness, God consciousness, Christ consciousness within you. He says it as clear as day. You cannot refute this because he's reading from the Bible. What Jesus has said. Christ consciousness attained in meditation will be lifted up forever on this last day by my universal self, the Christ consciousness. By my universal self, the Christ consciousness. When all his stored up karmic seeds of action and his physical, astral and causal bodies will be dis disentangled from around his soul. That liberated soul will find his life forever one with the everlasting life. A little bit more. When Jesus speaks of everyone which seeth the Son, by the word seeth, he means the perspective, perceptive power of intuition or feeling which 
can see, hear, smell, taste or touch without intermediary of the senses. How have I laboured intuition over the years? How have I laboured in my book? Intuition is the language of God. If you do not have intuition, you will not be able to know God. And you find your intuition deep in your meditation. It is something that grows out of that. It is quite evident that all people who saw Jesus Christ during his incarnation on earth were not automatically saved thereby. And there are many Christians today who have not to be have who have yet to be saved by consciously knowing him through intuitive wisdom developed in regular deep meditation and divine communion in which the Son or Christ consciousness is realized. Do you get that? Do you got that, people? Let me read that bit again. Christians today who have yet to be saved by consciously knowing him through intuitive wisdom developed in regular deep meditation and divine communion in which the Son or Christ consciousness is realized. Jesus was here pointing out to devotees that a mere belief in him without living and realising his truth in life could not possibly rescue them from the implacable tentacles of cosmic delusion. Let me read that one more time. Jesus was here pointing out to devotees that a mere belief in him without living and realizing his truth in life could not possibly rescue them from the implacable tentacles 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 of cosmic delusion you who just believe and you think that's your portal into the kingdom of god it isn't because you don't know god do you you only know God when you've entered into the kingdom of God by your meditation. You only know God when you intuit God with the greatest of power. When you do that, you will know without a shadow of a doubt that you are communicating with God consciousness, with the highest of the high. And this comes out of years and years of deep meditation. There is no other way into the kingdom of God. You will never get there by your belief. All you will do is con yourself. You will, you will place yourself in a delusion. And that is the bone of contention that I have with Christians. Because most of them are fools. Unless you absolutely know, via your Christ consciousness, via your deep meditation, via your intuition, you do not know God. And when you do know God, you absolutely know that you know God and you see and feel God everywhere as I've said these books are very very powerful they are vastly more powerful than the Bible because these books tell you the truth and these books speak to you via human psychology and philosophy these books are written by a very very wise enlightened being unlike the books in the Bible, which I haven't read a single one which I would consider was written by an enlightened being. Just a bunch of copycats. And the thing is about those sad books, um, the earliest book which was ever written wasn't even written until 140 years after Jesus died. That's in the New Testament. 140 years. You would think if people saw Jesus walking on water and doing all these miracles, they'll be writing it down in an instant. But all scholars will agree that at least 90 years passed. Some say 140 years passed before the first book was written about Jesus. How do we... How do we get our heads around that? Other than it's just fiction, it's just stories that people started to write. Because I'm telling you now, if I saw someone walking on water before my very eyes, I'd be writing about it straight away. Wouldn't you? I think you would. Why was it that the first book took so long? 
and then subsequent books, some of them written 250 years after the death of Jesus, apparently. So, that's a powerful reading. And this isn't for everybody, of course, because there's not a, 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 a large portion of my viewers who are um, religious or deeply spiritual. You have to be deeply spiritual if you are going to be finding this interesting and powerful. You have to know God if you are going to be able to find that powerful. Because if you don't know God, you will just read that and it won't mean a single thing to you because you won't be able to see the reality in it. You'll just be thinking in your ignorance and naivety and stupidity that you know Jesus because you believe in Jesus. It's just told you as clear as day there from the words of Jesus that you will never know the Christos unless you have the deepest of devotion to meditation. So, you best get started, huh?